as an investor, you are interested in buying this property, but the seller thinks you are a piece of crap. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the MLS Search and Analysis Show. I am your host, James Wise. You're watching Holton Wise TV. And uh, as I said at the top of the screen, how do you buy this when the seller thinks you're a piece of crap, right? I am working with my man, Tim. Okay, Tim, you're an investor from California. And you're a good dude, man. I like working with you. I don't think there's anything wrong with you. But the, the seller of this property thinks you're a piece of crap dude he don't like you he don't like what you're about which is crazy because he don't even know you but you know what that kind of stuff is very prevalent when we're working with out-of-state investors sometimes we get people that i would say we'll call them homers right sometimes you get homers and uh they they vilify out-of-state investors right tim you're an investor from california and you want to inject some of that capital into the cleveland market which most people would think that's a good thing. Anytime uh, you're injecting capital into something, that's usually good. You're usually fixing things up. But some people, they don't see things the same way, and they get very fidgety and very upset when out-of-state investors come to town. Hey, I'm leaving a message for Mr. James Wise. Mr. Wise, I'll let you know, uh, I did receive your letter here addressed to Dear Property Owner, expressing interest in buying my building so that you can flip it and sell it to investors in New York. California and Asia, uh, as quoted in your uh, paragraph three. Um, I want you to know, Mr. James Wise, I think that you are a deplorable human being. You are destroying our community, and you should really reevaluate yourself. Have a great day, sir. Now, to clarify, that voicemail was not necessarily the owner of this home but from time to time here at whole wise we get voicemails like that right like i'm not saying it's every day but dude i probably got a, a rolodex in the file uh, in the file system of like 30 or 40 of those kind of voicemails right uh you know obviously what we do it's very well documented right we've been uh, published in many newspapers holton wise tv has got about 50,000 subscribers as you guys are watching the show today uh so a lot of people right they've seen what we're doing Hell, we were even on Netflix, right? So a lot of people see what we do. And, of course, anytime what you're doing is exposed to a lot of people, you get a lot of opinions. And there's that small subset of people uh, that have the opinion that out-of-state investors are bad and they don't want to deal with them. And this particular seller, he is one of them. Uh, I've actually already analyzed this for somebody else. And I'll show you all that footage here in a moment, Tim. Uh, but we analyzed this property for somebody else, presented an offer, and the seller just declined it. Didn't want anything to do with us. It said, hey, no, nobody is going to buy my house unless they physically walk the property. It's not going to happen. That uh, other uh, buyer, I analyzed it for another buyer, rather, right? That other buyer, Tim, just like you, he's an out-of-state investor, right? Just a guy, honest guy, trying to make a living. And uh, this seller is upset that he does not live in Cleveland, not willing to sell him the property, right? He said, unless you physically walk my house, you can't buy my house, right? So, Tim, uh, the same thing is going to happen for you, right? This guy is just, you know, not a motivated seller. He's kind of a prick. And, uh, you know, people talk about fair housing and this or that. You know, you can't refuse to sell property to people based on certain things, right? Right race, sex, things of that nature, right? Military status. But living in California versus living in Cleveland is not one of those things. So it is this seller's legal right not to sell you the property, and I don't think he's willing to sell you the property. On the off chance you still want to pursue this, I think it's kind of going to be an uphill battle and we're going to be spinning our wheels because this guy's made it uh, pretty damn clear that anybody out of state, he's not interested in selling his property to. But if you want me to walk that path with you, Tim, I will absolutely do it for you. So here were my thoughts on the property before I found out all that side information. So let's take a look, right? 3130 West 30th, Cleveland, Ohio, 44109. It's been on the market almost two months, listed at $94,000. $900. What this is, is this is a pretty big cash cow, brother. This this has the ability 
uh, to bring in a ton of money because we have a duplex up front and then we have a single family home in the back. Now, as far as the rent roll goes, what we have on the screen for you, this is the rent roll. Uh, we have 700 and 675 coming in out of the two two-bedroom units, right? That's the duplex. Those are already tenanted. Those are already occupied. And as far as that 1000 a month, that would be the market rent of the single-family home, right? So when it's all said and done, we could be bringing in 2375 a month, right? Super cash cow. As far as what we have, right? The listing agents, they've provided us photos uh, of the duplex units, okay? So you can see nothing special, right? They didn't uh, by any means go above and beyond when they renovated this stuff, right? They just put in like your minimal, uh, <clears throat> you know, your minimal finishes, right? I would personally have liked to see things be a little bit nicer. Like when Holton Wise renovates units, we like to do things a little bit different, right? Like this right here, this is just a prime example of a landlord going in and doing the minimum, right? They went with carpet because carpet in the short run is cheaper than refinishing the hardwoods underneath, right? That's okay in the short term because you're saving a little bit of money on your turnover, but you're really hurting yourself in the long term because this is going to need to get swapped out probably every other tenant or every tenant, right? And then on the walls, what they did is they go the same color, right? They go same color on the trim with the wall, which is cheaper, right? When you're paying folks to paint, they don't have to cut it in, things of that nature, but you're not going to attract a higher quality tenant. So you can tell that the, the current owner wanted to get things done as cheap as humanly possible. Like here is another example. You'll see this in a lot of low-income rentals, right? What they did is they took the hardwood flooring and instead of uh, refinishing it and putting like a stain down, uh, they actually just painted it brown with a deck paint, right? So just so you know, you're going to be inheriting a property that's probably going to have a lot of... Um, deferred maintenance and, and and the current owner has just looked for the cheapest possible way to do everything this kitchen and one of the duplex units so i do like this kitchen right you got the home depot lowe's quality cabinetry nothing wrong there but you know with the finishes this guy or gal did they did get tenants in there as far as the back house we do not have any photos of this back house right we got nothing to go off of we got the 675 and the 700 here we have no photos of the interior of that home. All we know is the listing agent said with a little bit of work, uh, it should be ready to go. And we will have no problem after a renovation getting a Section 8 tenant into that back house for 1000 a month. But as far as like what we have to do, that uh, hasn't really been provided to us. So what I have done is I have budgeted for a full renovation on that unit right which is why i think we should pick this up a little bit cheaper than what they're asking right they're asking 94.9 i'd like to see you pick it up at ninety thousand dollars now if you pick it up at 90 i am budgeting twenty five thousand dollars for us to renovate that back house and what that's going to entail is a full cosmetic reno new fixtures in the kitchen new fixtures in the bath full patching of holes in the walls repainting the entire home right and that's going to be an agreeable gray paint on the walls with a white trim uh you know with a white around the trim right and then as far as the floors go it's going to be refinishing all the hardwoods in the property so you have nice uh, flowing, good-looking hardwood floors, not the brown deck-painted floors we've seen in the duplex. And then as far as the kitchen and the bath go, they will not have those hardwoods, though. What they will have is matching vinyl, right? So from a cosmetic standpoint, we can do all of that for approximately $20,000. Now, I've left $5,000 above and beyond that for unknowns, things we're not sure of, right? Other things in that back house, right? Is the roof screwed up? If so, we need to spend the five on a roof. Maybe that's not the issue, but maybe we have an issue with the hot water tank and the furnace. Furnace is about three Gs. Hot water tanks are about a G, right? So with the limited information we have right now, I think 25 is a very reasonable budget to fix up that back house, right? We'll, of course, know more after a third-party home inspection. But as of right now, going into this assuming approximately $25,000 is going to need to be spent in that back house to get her ready to rock and roll. That's what we got to do. But once you're uh, all said and done with that, brother, that's going to be a cash cow for you, right? $2,375 comes in. I anticipate you spending $1,100, leaving you with $1,275 in NOI. Now, 
that would amount to a 13.3 cap. And as far as financing goes, what you need to understand here, though, is financing can sometimes be a crapshoot on these type of properties. What you have is a grandfathered in non-conforming property. Okay, what that means is back in the day, right, building codes were different. They weren't as strict, right? Zoning regulations weren't as strict. So it wasn't a problem. Uh, to in a city lot build another home behind your home right so we have a duplex with a single family behind it all on one parcel today in 2020 you can't do that right you can't buy a duplex in the city of cleveland and then decide to build a single family home in the backyard that's no longer allowed for that zoning right so this is what's called non-conforming use it doesn't conform to the current zoning but you don't have to tear it down because it's grandfathered in okay but the issue lies uh say the home uh burned down okay everything burned down the lender lenders have issues loaning on these properties sometimes because they're non-conforming so if the home were to burn down it's hard for the lender uh, to justify the risk of making you the loan because you're not allowed to rebuild it in the same way, right? So, are you a lender? If so, Holton Wise is looking to partner with you. If you're licensed in all 50 states, go to HoltonWise.com. Click the digital media tab to advertise on Holton Wise TV today. Refinancing is going to be a crapshoot. So, what I recommend you do. Financing or refinancing could be a crapshoot, right? So if you do buy it, if you do buy it cash at the 115 and then you, uh, well, you buy it cash at the 90 rather, then you put in the 25. You're all into this investment for 115K. As far as like what it would reappraise for, like I wouldn't look at this as like a burr uh, deal here because I don't really know uh, what it would appraise for because you're, the amount of lenders you're going to be able to work with is going to be so much smaller, right? So it, again, it's a crapshoot. There's really no true comps and what they're going to appraise it for uh, it could be all over the place could, you know could be hit or miss so i i think it's very we need to go at this very conservatively and assume when you do find a lender who's willing to loan it because i'm not saying all lenders will not do this deal you could very much get financed and i have a whole list of lenders for you guys sales at holdenwise.com if you want the list send me an email send my team an email We'll get you that list. So I'm not saying you can't finance the asset. But what I'm telling you guys is you're going to run into roadblocks financing this asset. Not every lender is going to do it, right? So I don't want to stand up here and, and project out a, a higher ARV for you. Could I sell it fully occupied, bringing in almost $30,000 a year in rent for more than one fifteen? Yeah, I could probably sell it for like one forty, one fifty. As far as from you, from your financing perspective, though, I don't really know what you'll get it to appraise for. So I did this... this a number analysis for you very conservatively stating that if you did refi it out they would only give you the value that you have in which is 115 thus meaning you'd have 28,750 into the deal and would still net it off as a 38.1 percent cash on cash return who knows if you talk to many lenders and you do a lot of legwork you do a lot of groundwork perhaps you can get a lender uh, to give you a much higher value but again you know, I just need you to understand, Carlo, that this is not a traditional property. It's non-conforming, so it is totally going to be a crapshoot from a bank financing perspective. So your best bet would be to pay for it cash if that's the route you want to go and then work to get it reappraised later. But again, your values can be be all over the place, right? So that's my thoughts on this property, Carlo. I do like the property. Financing issues aside, it's going to be a solid cash cow and it's near the metro health area guys you know i like metro health right we get in that area right now for super cheap we put in section eight tenants to alleviate the risks of a higher risk neighborhood and then we hope knock on wood that uh, we're going to get some serious back end icing on that cake with neighborhood gentrification because the metro health campus is right in this neighborhood and they are investing a billion dollars into their campus in the surrounding neighborhood right so all told carl i think it's a good deal I, th I think you find yourself a good property but there are a few issues with it that i needed to make you aware of which i have now done so all right tim so now you got the full scoop on the property brother uh i think it's in your best interest in my best interest to just move on man it's it, really no point 
you know, trying to negotiate with a brick wall who's got preconceived notions uh, about people like you, about people like myself. Um, but it's it's up to you, man. We are here for you, brother. So if you still want to submit an offer, if you're one of those guys, hey, man, money talks. Let's just put the offer in and he wants to tell us to fuck ourselves. He could tell us to fuck ourselves. I got no problem. Having this motherfucker tell me to fuck myself on your behalf, Tim, I just want to be totally upfront and transparent with you and let you know that I think it's a very low probability we do this particular deal because he's prejudiced based upon you living out there with all that California sunshine. And he thinks people like me who are facilitating people like you bettering their lives through real estate investment is somehow bad for my hometown. Obviously, I don't agree. But hey, man, sometimes that's just how the cookie crumbles so tim let me know what you want to do everybody else if you're interested in working with me and my team in the same way tim has just send us an email sales at holdenweiss.com include your phone number my team will give you a call walk you through how you could start build or grow your real estate portfolio and yes we will be there on your behalf battling for you being on your side taking punches when sometimes we run into people who don't like your business plan Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.